Hey, y'all. Welcome in. This is the Cover 3 College Ball Podcast. This is the Mailbag Extra. Uh, if you recall, I was out uh, one day, and then the next mailbag came back. We had so many good questions, and I had to jump to IMG for the 24-7 Sports Media Day over there at IMG Academy down in Bradenton, and we said we'd follow up on YouTube with a YouTube-only mailbag, and this is episode one of that extra. I'm proud to be joined by my friend here, Graham Coffey, on Twitter at Dog Out West. I brought him in today for a very specific reason. We had an awesome question, man. I'm excited to ask you about this. Awesome. Yeah. All right. So uh, this question comes from Dogs on Top. And uh, I, I saw Graham had done a lot of work on this. So I was like, all right, let's, let's save this one. He writes, this is primarily for Bud, uh, but would love to get thoughts from Chip, Danny, and the other guys as well. So instead of those guys, we're going to have Graham and Bud. Uh, <laughs> primarily Graham here. Uh he continues, there's a running back debate between the fans about whether Kirby Smart is below average at developing talent. Not a running back debate, but a running debate, excuse me. Rival fans point to anecdotal evidence like Trent Thompson, bad, while us UGA fans do the same. Eric Stokes, good. Obviously, if you guys don't know, Trent Thompson was, at least on some recruiting services, the number one overall player in the country. And guys, he was an absolute stud. I mean, I saw him. He was younger than grade level. He was tearing folks up. Like, he looked like a grown man, despite the fact he was 16 and had all the potential in the world, you know, for a variety of reasons, he didn't work out. Eric Stokes was not a super highly rated guy, at least not for most of the process. And I think on a lot of sites, you know, remained kind of a, a lower rated player. Um, so that's just some background on the question. Obviously, Georgia fans listening would, would know that. Uh, so he writes, has 24-7 ever looked into which coaches or programs produce NFL draft picks at the highest rate relative to their recruiting rankings? Uh, if so, where does Kirby rank on that spectrum? If not, do you think Kirby is above average or below average in this area? And which other coaches or programs do you think are best or worst at developing talent? We'll get into the second part of, of the, you know, which programs are the best or worst, maybe, maybe a little bit later. Uh, but I, I wanted to pick your brain on this. It, does does Kirby Smart have a, a development problem relative to the talent he brings in? I don't think so. I mean, I think first and foremost, I feel like a lot of this debate got started after Alabama had six first round picks in this draft and everyone's looking at the 24 seven sports talent rankings and, you know, Georgia's Georgia was number one for last year, you know, that in terms of the, the sum of their recruiting classes, they had the most talented roster in the country. And I think people are saying, well, why isn't Kirby smart doing that? And, you know, I, I think a, it's a little unfair to compare him to, you know, probably the greatest coach of all time and Nick Saban. Um, but B, so, I mean, first of all, the NFL draft is an event for outliers, right? There's 3,500 players that are draft eligible every year. Only 250, 260 of them are going to go into the NFL draft as it is. And so with Kirby, you know, I think everyone points to the, the five stars. And I think there's a misconception within college football fan bases and, and you know, college football observers as a whole that, if you're a five-star recruit, then you should automatically be a first round pick. And I know that, you know, that's kind of the concept in, in that a lot of services, you know, they have 30 to 35 five stars because that's how many players are taken in the first round of a draft. But over, a, you know, like 38 and a half percent of five stars will never go drafted at all. And only about... 38% of them will ever be drafted in the first two rounds of the draft. And so I think with Kirby, you've got, you know, off the top, your, your five stars that have come in that have gotten through college. You had Miko Hardman in 2016, Isaac Nada and Jacob Eason that same year. Eason transfers out to Washington. Um, Hardman's a second round pick. Not as a seventh round pick who probably came out a year early, but you know, that, that still counts against Kirby, I guess, maybe, but in 2017, Isaiah Wilson was a five-star. Richard LeCount was a five-star. DeAndre Swift was a five-star. Wilson's a first round pick. DeAndre Swift is the, the first or second pick of the second round. LeCount ended up being a fifth rounder this year after a motorcycle accident. And then 2018, we had Tyson Campbell, who was also a five-star. Those are the only guys that have, finished their careers that Kirby Smart recruited into the program as five stars under his regime that took over in 2016. Um, and Camelo was obviously a second round pick, but so, I mean, by that math, Kirby Smart is putting, you know, every five star prospect that he's br brought in has been drafted so far that's finished their career 
and two thirds of those guys have been drafted in the first two rounds. So he's really hitting, you know, about double the average of, of what the rest of college football is in that regard. So let, let, let me ask you this, because obviously the, the natural response that maybe, you know, a Florida fan or, or a Tennessee fan would have is say, sure, you're only looking at the guys who finish their careers there. Does Kirby have an overly high attrition rate, in your opinion, for five-star players? Like, have there been a ton who have transferred out and not finished their career? Is the sample of guys who did finish representative, you know, to the whole? No, I mean, that's, that's a fair, that's a fair point. I mean, you go back and look at, uh, I believe the 2018 class and, you know, Fields leaves Luke Ford, number one tight end in the country, ends up back in Illinois with a, a sick granddad. Um, you know, all these guys you start going through. And I, I do think that Georgia has had a lot of guys transfer out, but I also think you look at, look at Alabama and, you know, there's been a lot of these guys that have transferred out as well. I think, the, that narrative really came with the Justin Fields transfer. And I think like that's the big thing that gets sort of, you know, re redebated or re litigated year after year after year. And even within the Georgia fan base, there's still a lot of controversy of, you know, from and Fields, did he mismanage that situation? And I think because of, you know, the, the Justin, like you let Justin Fields transfer, you know, that was the, the hot take like sports radio, you know, topic for, for anyone that wanted to talk about Georgia football for a while there. And so I think it became easy to, you know, sort of say Kirby smart is mismanaging his talent. Um, there's only 22 guys that can start. Right. And, you know, I mean, I think that's the, the tough thing. And it's like, if you're bringing in recruiting classes that are this talented, especially now with, the way that the transfer rules have changed over the last few years, like it's, it's unrealistic to expect all these guys are going to stay uh, there. There's going to be opportunity elsewhere for some of them. And I think it makes, you know, it's, it's understandable why they would take those opportunities. So Graham, I don't know if you had a chance to look into this, um, but it, it does the, uh, does the pattern of development, which is actually pretty damn impressive. D does that hold right. as well when, when you get into some of those, you know, upper to mid grade four stars? It does actually. Yeah. So, I mean, it, with the four stars, um, you know, I mean, and, and this is using that same kind of qualifier of have finished their career. Cause I don't know how else you can really answer this question right now, but um, yeah, I mean, in 2016, basically everyone is gone from that class. That was Kirby's first recruiting class. The only guy that's left on the roster is Julian Rochester and of the seven four stars that finished their career at Georgia, Four of them have been drafted in Ben Cleveland, Charlie Warner, Riley Ridley, and Javon Wims. And so, and, and there, you know, six three stars were in that class. One was drafted in Solomon Kindley, who actually left after three years. Um, but yeah, if you, if you go through 2016, 2017, 2018, so basically of guys that have finished and didn't transfer out, you have 16 four stars. Ten of those guys were NFL draft picks, which is a 62.5% draft rate compared to 24.2 percent being the national average for for four stars drafted so i mean i you see a a very high clip there and i mean as far as as the three star guys as well uh kirby's getting about 25 percent of his three stars drafted which the national average i believe is about five percent so yeah i mean he's, he's definitely outperforming the norms in college football um I think it's tough with this, right? Because like for every Eric Stokes, like you said, there's a Trenton Thompson and, you know, I, there's, it's, it's really easy to uh, kind of to pick out one or two examples instead of looking at the entire sample. And I think like, that's, that's what you have to do if we're going to make a statement of saying Kirby smart can't develop, you know, maybe it's more fair to say Kirby smart struggled to develop this particular player, but look at what all, all he did with all these other guys. It, it seems like in some ways he almost has uh, an Alabama comparison problem, right? Like if you compare anybody to, to Alabama, like that's going to not look all that great. Yeah. I, I know we're looking at some historical data. Uh, none of smarts classes so far have shown up in, in, you know, like, like anywhere close to the bottom of like the, the most underachieving, you know, draft, like, you know, classes talent relative to draft. I mean, you, you want to talk about those like the the late Mac Brown classes at Texas where they signed like you know, 22 blue chips and one kid got drafted in like the fourth round type thing like that 
or you know some of those Butch Jones classes at Tennessee were ended up not being <laughs> all, all that great. I, I really yeah I don't think he has a, a real you know development problem there. And I agree with your point as well, Graham. On I think cherry picking a sample which is already small of only three classes for a guy who's a first time head coach is not really conducive to quality analysis. Yeah, one hundred percent. I mean I think time time will tell, right? I mean there's a lot to, to come down the pipe for, you know, I, I would assume Kirby Smart will be at Georgia for a long time and there's no indications he's going to stop recruiting at a, you know, a top three national class a year kind of level. Um, I, and I, I think it's, it's going to be interesting to see, right. Cause I think these numbers will go down as, as over the next couple of years, like some of these guys will matriculate that were higher rated recruits and, you know, judging by where they are on the depth chart right now, probably won't won't be NFL draft draft picks but still I think that you know he just had nine guys drafted last year it's the most that Georgia's ever had uh in a single draft so it's it's odd to me that this question has come up kind of everywhere in the college football landscape like lately it, it seems like this has been a hot topic of conversation and it seems strange that would happen after the most successful draft the program's ever had Absolutely. Hey, Graham, I really appreciate you coming on. I think we're going to make this a regular thing with, with taking a mailbag question or two from the Cover 3 mailbag, taking it to YouTube and just making it YouTube only. We're trying to increase our presence here. And if you all enjoyed it, let us know in the comments. Make sure to follow Graham on Twitter at Dog Out West, spelled, I mean, like any UGA fan would, would, would spell dog, right? With also, an A and a W. Exactly, exactly. And also on Dog Sports Live. Man, I really appreciate you coming on. Yeah, thanks for having me, bud. Really appreciate it. All right, dude, enjoy it. Take care.